My name is Dmitry Panov, as already uh, was introduced, so I will speak about software development process at Fedor. Uh, okay, so this is a kind of briefly agenda for the talk. Uh, I will speak a bit about me, about Feeder, about software development methodologies, about version control system flows. Uh, I will sp uh, tell you about uh, some key study which was on our project uh, and how we customize software development process for it. So let's go. Some brief information about me. You already know something like I have more than 11 year experience in commercial IT. I have more than 10 year experience in Ruby and Ruby on Rails. Uh, currently I'm working at EPAM and I'm a solution architect at Fedor uh, in EPAM. So, and also I'm a lovely father and a husband. I really like a travel. I really love uh, life at, at all. And um, I'm interested in artificial intelligence, uh, data science, um, and uh, uh, we have such trends for now. Yeah, we have Docker Swarm, microservices, artificial intelligence, data science, robotics, who uh, already work with such technologies. Please raise your hand. Oh, preliminary, a bit less than half a room. Okay, uh, and who actually want to work with such technologies? Let's say tomorrow or next week. <laughs> oh, <laughs> guys, come on. Um, actually, yeah, we have kind of trending and uh, our like programming always, uh, programming is a serving, yeah? We are serving technology industries, we are serving uh, some uh, situations and uh, with a prog with automatization of them with the programs uh, but uh, how do you think like when the technology boosted uh, how do you think in which industries it starts first of all for example maybe somebody know about world wide web like uh, from which industry it was boosted and uh, search in the internet <laughs> right, yeah. It was start from porno industry, yeah. Actually, uh, they need to find uh, some uh, files on, uh, and for that they create a small application to search files among uh, the drives. And this was kind of start of the Google, actually. And now we know about artificial intelligence, yeah? And uh, in artificial intelligence we have uh, face recognition technology yeah so it was t this technology also was boosted by porno industry because they uh, invested a lot of money in order to find a, uh, actor for the video because it's uh, obviously like a lot of time need to spend to, to understand who where is uh, playing <laughs> <laughs> yeah so playing. that's kind of automatization yeah uh, but oh sorry uh, face recognition technology was boosted, oh, face. face recognition was boosted by porno industry, yeah. But uh, like for me and I think for, for most of you, uh, porn industry is not the case where we, we want to, to meet those technologies, yeah. So <laughs> uh, uh, so someone told that we can find them in military, yeah, it's true. Also in military, uh, a lot of things actually start from military, yeah, because they have a lot of budgets and even in some countries this budge budget even not calculated at all. Uh, and uh, yeah, they start everything can invest in uh, everything uh, like new. But uh, like if, if to, I, I actually for me, I don't want to work with in military because uh, it's kind of a force, violence, it's kind of, uh, uh, yeah, when, when it's defense is good, but when it's attack, it's not good, yeah. So my choose was banking and fintech. Yeah, th this is also industry with a lot of money. And uh, as we can understand where we have a lot of money, we have investment and we can boost technologies there. Um, so I choose banking and fintech. Uh, does anybody know about PSD2? Please raise your hand. Who know what is that? <coughs> okay, so uh, 
uh, in Europe, uh, we know like uh, different banking industry like in USA, in Europe, and actually in Europe, they, uh, from the government point of view, they're trying to create uh, kind of these payment service directives, uh, which is, this is the second one. So this is briefly explanation of the difference. Like, so the first one is a kind of usual banking. Yeah, we have a bank, we have internal API for the bank, we have some application, and user is registered, have account in the bank and use this application. It's like, uh, let's say, past. And nowadays, they pursue to, uh, to uh, that all banks need to support PSD2. It means that all customers which open their account in different banks, for example, you open account in three banks, yeah? And uh, you don't want to use three different applications in order to get your money from accounts. And uh, also, when you want to pay your money in some uh, financial system payment services and so on, you don't want to have for each service a different application in order where you need to log in and uh, transfer money to account. So in order to make more convenience for the user, for the customer, and to improve security of financial services and uh, payment services, they introduce this PSD2 standard, which means that they, um, there is needed some third party level, which will kind of aggregate a public API from banks in order customer use it like for not only for from banks al also for payment services like uh, mm, when you even buy uh, some uh, products in the shop or coffee like in coffee shop and so on so nowadays in Europe even uh, like in what I, when I was in Copenhagen uh, they even not use plastic card yeah they pay with a mobile phone um, and actually, uh, why it is kind of uh, important in banking technology, banking in fintech, because uh, because actually PSD2 was already um, uh, created, uh, the standard was created and start pursuing. So you can see uh, that uh, till uh, 2019, it will be already forced for the companies to uh, to uh, allow to get uh, accounts, user data by the public API. So it means, uh, but we understand that a lot of banks, they do does not have those APIs, they does not have those technologies. So this kind of opportunity. And uh, that's why I want to talk to you about a feeder uh, as a company with which I, like a client for, of EPAM with which uh, I'm working. So actually, they create this kind of the system, which is uh, give ability to start like banking systems or uh, give ability to rub banking systems or payment systems or uh, banking services. So, and they also have a lot of uh, kind of these technologies uh, on board. So they have uh, community service, which allow uh, to communicate uh, users in the network as the same as we have in Facebook or but but this is kind of already past thing uh, they have cryptocurrency uh, integration they have blockchain integrations they have artificial intelligence uh, which was uh, uh, kind of uh, implemented in partnership with a company which uh, created uh, a kind of um, virtual assistant who uh, um, support banking customers in order to uh, tell them or describe some products of bank, some what they can uh, choose and so on. Uh, so obviously they have private clouds and they have really robust API. Uh, and like about blockchain, so uh, Fedor Bank is using Eternum uh, which is the second powerful coin uh, after the Bitcoin. And uh, the Ripple uh, system, which allow to spend actually um, Bitcoins, also uh, was integrated with uh, Fedor in 2017. And also Fedor with Kraken, uh, Unite uh, start to launch a cryptocurrency bank, which is kind of 
use blockchain and the same thing as a blockchain but uh, kind of not like more legal or more uh, regulated let's say uh, and uh, like for now like you can see uh, Fedor uh, have uh, uh, created solution for one one shot uh, project from Netherlands and uh, uh, so actually they uh, create the platform for the integration to PSD2 for them and uh, it's like very important for now in Europe it's kind of because they need this and uh, I need to talk a bit about Fedor architecture because uh, in the future slides uh, in order to explain them uh, you need to know some information so like as I told like the system can be uh, go up uh, on a different uh, core banking systems so there could be uh, used uh, different core banking systems uh, actually they provide this uh, feeder operation system which content of uh, contents of uh, some services which is connected to the kind of accounts transactions security services and so on which is actually creates as a core and there are also services kind of front-end services which uh, make API to the front-end applications like uh, mobile system tablets uh, and so on uh, and uh, kind th this is kind of uh, the layered architecture and the main idea is that we have this feeder OS which is kind of reusable for all customers and uh, 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 like this is a core which is used for uh, any customer in order to automate their banking processes. Uh, okay, I, I think I speak a lot about banks here, too much. <laughs> okay, let's go to the software development methodologies. Uh, so, can you tell which software development methodologies you know? Okay, else? Right one. <laughs> Which else? Workaround oriented. Sorry? Workaround oriented. Mm. Stack overflow, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Stack overflow, copy pasta. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, like I, uh, I think you all know about those kind of uh, standard uh, software development methodologies. And uh, like, so I, I would not explain them because you, you know everything, like what is Agile, Lean, XP, and so on. Uh, but the idea is that uh, we, we need to know them. And, uh, but uh, only to know them is not enough. We need to uh, understand how we can uh, evolve them, how we can adjust them for our uh, projects and for our needs. Uh, so, who know about scale it agile framework and less? Raise your hand. Uh, okay, so the idea is that we, we know all about agile, yeah? And we know uh, which processes, is, uh, which uh, things, uh, uh, which like we have a framework in agile, kind of uh, scrum, we have that agile is iterative process and so on. Uh, but uh, it's it's uh, and it's actually work for the let's say for the projects yeah, but how to apply agile to the whole company where we can have twenty or hundreds of projects yeah, so in order to company be agile, so all departments of company to be agile, so this kind of not so easy actually and th that's kind kind of the idea how how we can can uh, rise uh, when we rise actually our company when we create more teams, how we can integrate them between together. Uh, so this is about less. So, and here you can see like uh, that Agiles uh, and other methodologies, they have a practices and processes inside. And uh, here kind of uh, connected processes between together. And uh, to be honest, uh, on in each company or in each uh, um, uh, in a department, there should be connection between them. But obviously, like uh, at the basement level, yeah, 
we have uh, the basement for agile is iterate iterative process and this is a code version control because everything starts from the code yeah our products is based on the code and we deploy it somewhere and so on so let's talk about version control system folks uh, who work now not with git please raise your hand not with git now now really great very good uh, so there are only gitters yeah super uh, so that's why I would not explain git flow yeah because you all know about it so we have kind of uh, master branch develop we create feature branches and do merges but uh, let's imagine it if we have uh, like large company where we have uh, hundreds of uh, merge requests to the master per day it's become complicated to to, uh, to to merge them all to review them all to coordinate them all yeah that's why uh, or imagine if we have a lot more pull requests uh, like uh, for the um, let's say uh, distributed teams ac across the globe so that's why git flow like work a bit better so like git flow is kind of the same as a oh sorry github flow is kind of the same as a git flow but there is one small thing. So like we have upstream fork, which is the main fork and each developer like Clarice, Bobs, they uh, create their own fork and they work in the own fork, which means named origin. And they create their branches. They push the branches to the origin and create pull requests to the upstream. And the idea is that the, these branches could be uh, these connections as much as we need right like they can uh, interpret our organization actually even uh, so this help us uh, to uh, to create uh, products where actually works not one team two teams three teams sometimes 20 teams or hundreds of teams so it's very good but now i i want to uh describe you a bit case study from our project like so our product which is uh, feeder os which i explained you uh is served now uh, more than 20 projects different uh, banking systems or uh tele telecommunication system which actually use banking services and so on and on the project we have uh, like uh, here in the Lviv on the project we have uh, three teams per uh, 10 people in each team and we uh, integrate so uh, we integrate those teams together but uh, we all like all those 20 projects they are working on the same core component it means that uh, they could not could not uh, make d different core component for one project and another core component for another project every changes that go from for e any project go into the core component if it's related to the core component and al also in order to uh, understand that we create really quality uh, solution with a good quality uh, we have uh, manual and automation testing uh, so like uh, what what is the idea the idea is that in order to understand processes and, and improve them, we need to, to understand the complaints, actually what we need to improve, yeah? So, and here is, uh, I describe it a bit, uh, main complaints from different uh, roles uh, on the project, like from developers, from KAs, from test managers. So like from developers, the main concern is too many time for poor, uh, for review of pull requests to core components because uh, all projects working on th on that I and it take could take a week or several days um, like from QA they do rerun manual tests several times so it's not efficient uh, and a uh, lot of configuration issues even uh, because a lot of components and uh, some uh, config could be 
not applied and uh, this kind of not issue, real issue, but configuration issue and it's uh, consume time. Uh, like, for, for example, from dev leads, obviously we need to have all pull requests review of it, yeah? Like, we understand that this, uh, this is true and uh, we need to have this control. Uh, and also it is very good to have test automation before merge in order to understand that because when dev lead uh, review pull request, he need to understand that this pull request does not broke already existing functionality. Uh, so this kind of the uh, schema which um, uh, explains the process, like the start process or um, on, on which we were working and uh, which we are, uh, which I am actually to improve. So you can see like the developer create code to the end uh, in their branch in the fork and create this pull request to the core banking fork, uh, core component fork and just wait and can wait like a day, sometimes even week which is very bad, yeah? Because he even could not understand if the code is uh, good or not. Like uh, when it is merged, uh, we, cre we create kind of uh, the build, yeah? We, we work on the Docker, so create build and deploy is very easy. But, uh, but we need to wait until this in order to create build to deploy to the our uh, development environment and staging environment and UAT environment. So this kind of the main bottleneck and we, we need how, uh, uh, some, some mechanism to resolve it. Actually, we, we, we could not avoid this review because it's uh, merged to the core components, yeah? So how actually I would like to address those complaints in order to resolve them? Yeah, this diagram looks a bit more complicated but actually the, it helps. So uh, like this, uh, the same, like developer create pull request, but actually before he created pull request, he can run uh, Docker instances uh, images uh, on his own local machine in production mode and test configuration. It, it will mean that the same configuration will be applied for all other environments and uh, there no uh, configuration issue will be. Uh, after that, uh, dev lead uh, fork, f in the dev lead fork, he create pull request. And uh, this pull request is kind of uh, reviewed by the dev lead for each team we have a dev lead, yeah. And uh, during the review process, uh, there is a created uh, build which uh, deployed to the uh, digital dev environment where automation test is uh, run and uh, dev lead can understand that this pull request does not uh, broke anything that was implemented before. Uh, and after that, like when uh, dev lead uh, understands that everything is good, some rework is already uh, done by the developer, um, dev lead create uh, uh, release candidate and deploy this release candidate uh, to the developer environment where manual QA test already can test it. And uh, after that we have already uh, some build, we have already tested build, uh, but we, we yet not merge to the core component fork. Yeah, so uh, after that, we create a pull, uh, pull request into the core component fork, so core team can review it. Uh, but, uh, and it uh, again can take like, like a day or a week, but because of it was already reviewed by team lead, actually uh, uh, this time is really reduced because uh, this review uh, all, uh, like tests already provided, code review already provided, and they just review kind of if this uh, not broke uh, project uh, like uh, component for, for uh, other uh, projects. And 
and after that we deploy to staging in UAT. But the idea is uh, also that we even not need to wait until uh, uh, until testing finish it on the dev sandbox with uh, release candidate uh, in order to create pull request. We can create in progress pull request to the core component even on the stage when uh, pull request was reviewed on the dev lead repository. Uh, yeah, common repository. So it, it also will boost a bit. So uh, sometimes like uh, efficiency was kind of if with one pull request, uh, we need to wait a week. Now we can wait there like a day or two days. And uh, in common process, we can wait like three days at, at, at most. At most. Uh, yeah. So, and when, uh, like, w when we actually create this flow, what was also interesting uh, that uh, at the start, uh, I told that this is my fir uh, second pivot and uh, I was in the previous one where here is, uh, was good speaker from Kiev, guy who explained about Linux. And what was interesting is that he showed the flow from the Linux that Linux used. And I realized that this is actually very similar flow that we are actually use now because it's the same kind of the leads who is maintainer of some subsystems and after that they create pull requests to Linux Torus which is kind of the core. Yeah, so this distribution uh, give uh, the ability to really um, process a, a huge amount of pull requests and to keep quality with it. So the outcomes will be just to repeat that we need to keep learning software development methodologies. We need to gather complaints on our processes from our stakeholders, actually from us, uh, from different uh, roles of our company. We need to describe this existing process uh, and have them documented because if we cannot understand what the process is, we cannot improve them. Yeah, it's uh, like obvious. Uh, after that, when we know, uh, let's say, requirements or complaints, we describe existing process, we think about how we can improve our process, yeah? And we improve process, we improve efficiency, uh, we improve uh, uh, quality, actually, of work of our developers, and they can go home earlier. <laughs> so this is kind of the reference of uh, materials that was used. And thank you. Questions? Yeah, hi, first. <laughs> Good question. Okay, what is Bastion going on? Uh, it's like real yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th that's why this is uh, kind of the cycle. So when we improve our processes, it doesn't mean that we improve and everything will be working. No, something can go, like we can uh, not uh, calculate something uh, in order to, uh, to find it. So we, we do it iteratively and after that we gather again complaints and understand, oh, something goes wrong, we need to adjust something, we need to react on it. So when we improve our process, it's not uh, kind of uh, a product or the final thing. It's a process, improving process. One more question. No? No questions? All one? Okay. Uh, so, uh, what developers have to do uh, during that week uh, while uh, their uh, pull requests are in progress? Uh, so, are they just. Yeah, so. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Like, uh, I suppose the question was for the first process, like basic yeah. one. Yeah, actually they create a pull request and they go to the another task. Uh, but the main problem is that uh, we have a scrum, yeah? And scrum have uh, iteration, iteration ends. And at the end of iteration, we need to 
uh, deliver some build which is working and which is uh, consist of uh, all completed user stories. But if pull request was not merged into the core components, it means we have nothing at the uh, end of the sprint. Yeah. So th that's why, like, uh, this is not the case when developers just uh, um, drink a coffee. But this is the case uh, when we need to boost it because of uh, the delivery. Do you have a thought, please? Uh, yeah, for sure, yeah. <laughs> like uh, three days before end of the sprint, this is a court freeze. And three days after the end of the sprint, this is an integration phase. No, 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 no. Uh, actually, uh, uh, Git was kind of uh, uh, Git was created by. Bu yeah. Uh, actually, like, uh, yeah, this is a git flow. No, no, this is the original git flow, which was st uh, uh, Linus Torvalds. Ah. It was a start, so yeah. When he invented Linus git, invented yeah, Wh when he, uh, 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 yeah. And when he recommended to use it, uh, this, yeah, this was kind of recommended flow. But when we have really scaled company, large or scaled projects distributed, it's uh, and if we have thousands of uh, functional branches which uh, create merge requests into the develop branch and to the master, it's kind of nightmare to uh, coordinate all those pull requests. That's, that's, uh, I mean, I just feel strongly that it's GitHub uh, inventing. Not, uh, yes, uh, yes, pull requests, yes. So uh, that's why I told this here as a merge request, and here we have a pull request, yeah. And uh, and actually, why this forks was uh, created in a GitHub because GitHub positioned it as an open source platform, and they want to people to uh, create uh, uh, code projects systems and to to make it convenient. Yeah, so that that's why they use a Git because it was for remote servers and for remote teams uh, actually aimed and created by Linux Torvalds. But they uh, understand that uh, it, like efficiency of just uh, managing branches is not enough. That's why they create these forks. But actually, how Linux work uh, development process Linux is now, they does not have kind of they they have kind of types of of branch here. Yeah? So they have this kind of uh, maintainer branches. Uh, and after that, everything goes to the Linux. And an uh, interesting thing, but it's from previous conference that uh, actually Linux Torvalds has has account on GitHub, but uh, there is a text that please do not create pull requests there because we do does not consider them. Uh, indicators, uh, let's say when you use Git, GitHub flow, you already use Git flow. Uh, so uh, when you work on GitHub, ok uh, obviously you will use GitHub flow because you need to create a fork. Uh, when you create your home, comp like home project, obviously you don't want uh, probably uh, to start from GitHub. You will probably start from your local. Uh, branch, uh, but uh, local repository, but uh, still again, in some time week, you, you want to post your code in GitHub, yeah? So you will follow GitHub flow. So I even cannot imagine where just poor Git flow could be 
uh, good enough. Maybe very small projects or small companies. Thank you. It was my draw. Thank you, guys. <laughs>